Hello, everyone. Welcome to the King's Virtual Open House session. Today, we have wonderful faculty and student representative from our Social Justice and Peace uh, program here at King's. So first, we're going to have a brief presentation, and then afterwards, we'll have a time for a Q&A session. Um, if you have any questions throughout the presentation, feel free to put them in the, through the chat function, and then um, I will read those um, questions to um, our faculty members and students. So without further ado, Dr. Tom, over to you. Okay. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for, for joining us all in this um, strange format. I'm, I'm sad that I'm not able to see all your faces, but um, hopefully if you uh, come to SJP program next year, we'll get to know each other much better. So my plan for today is straightforward. I just want to um, say a bit about SJP, tell you a bit about the program, who I am, who the faculty are, answer any questions you might have, and then most importantly introduce you to a couple of our students um, so that you can kind of get a little bit of a taste of what the student experience is like in SJP. So um, let me share some slides for you. I can tell you a little bit about uh, myself. Um, I um, did my undergraduate degree at McGill. Um, at the same time I was there I got very interested in anti-war um, activism and I then did my master's degree at UBC in political science when I got really interested in working on the downtown east side with homeless populations and then I moved to uh, Paris for a couple of years and I was uh, studying there and involved in some activism with homelessness groups and then moved to Toronto for my PhD I did my PhD in political philosophy and was involved doing mainly activism around migrant justice organizing. I've now been at King's uh, in the social justice and peace program for five years. And my main kind of activism involvement these days is doing anti-racist organization. And I say that just to illustrate that one of the things that's really unique and I think special about SJP is that all of the faculty are like this. All of the faculty have, you know, we have one of our one of our feet in academia. We are scholars, and we write, we research, we go to conferences, and we also have our other foot uh, in the community, doing all kinds of different social justice activities, activism of various sorts, whether that's at a soup kitchen, whether that's with political groups, um, whether it's in women's shelters or food banks, all kinds of things. And I think that's such an important thing about the program. And we encourage that for our students to, to constantly be connecting their academic study uh, with the real world. So that's who I am and all our faculty uh, are like that as well. Okay, so SJP. So the social justice uh, program is what I think is unique about us and, and so important about us is that we, we literally are engaged in the very biggest issues in the entire world, right? The most pressing political issues are our bread and butter. So inequality, right? Thinking about the differences between the very rich and the very poor. Um, I was just reading this morning that Bill Gates now has $80 uh, billion in wealth, which means that the average American would have to work for 2 million years to acquire as much wealth as he has. So such uh, um, inequalities like that obviously put incredible stress and strain on our society. Um, in SJP, we talk about climate change, right? One of the defining, if not the defining issues of our lives. We talk about sexism, we talk about racism, we talk about disability, um, we talk about poverty, we talk about, about job security. Um, really the, the fundamental problems and cleavages that are impacting our society and our lives. And, you know, I think this is, these are always um, some of the most pressing topics, but particularly right now in a time of COVID, we are seeing the inequalities and the and the problems that always exist in society are particularly striking and they're particularly exacerbated right 
anyone of course, of course can get COVID, but how it impacts people is very stratified and very different depending on who people are. In the US, for example, black people are dying at three times the rate of white people from COVID. It's predominantly poor people and people who have precarious jobs who are suffering the most. So an SJP approach would be thinking about how can we use this moment as a portal for thinking about a different world and the kind of world that we want to be. Would it be better to have something like a universal basic income, for example, than our current welfare system, which lets many people down? So SJP program is about um, combining these three elements, right? So we have obviously a, a rigorous focus on academic learning. So that's standard university reading, writing, learning how to write papers, learning how to present arguments. Um, but on top of that, we have these other dimensions too of experiential learning, which has historically um, been such an important focus of our program that we're gonna tell you more about. Experiential learning means getting out into the community, or into a different country and learning through doing, right? And the reason that's so important is because you can you know, read about poverty or inequality until you're blue in the face, but it's a different thing to actually travel and actually see things with your own eyes, right? It's a different kind and often more profound type of learning. And then social action refers to the, the attempt to not just learn things, but to try to put them into practice with the hope and aspiration of making the world a better place, right? And that is what is distinctive about social justice. In every program at King's, there's a really excellent academic learning. SJP are slightly, we're slightly different in that our, our goal is not simply to learn and study, but it's to learn and study so that we can have an impact in trying to make the world a bit of a better place. So, students in SJP, like in other programs, are free to to structure their study in different kinds of ways depending on what interests you. The, the normal ways that you can do that are you can take a minor in social justice and peace studies, you can take a major or you can do an honors. And basically all that means is how much of your time at university do you wanna spend in, in one field. So if you take an honors, what that means is most of your time is spent doing social justice classes. If you do a minor, it means much less. And students are free to do whatever, whatever works best for them. Um, as a professor, my advice to students is usually in their first year to take a number of different classes, take a number of introductory classes in different subjects and see what resonates for you. Most of our students in SJP did not come to King's planning on doing SJP. Most came to do, thinking they were gonna do sociology or social work or what have you. And then they took our first year class and they were like, wow, this really resonates with me. And it has a tangible different feel than other classes. And that's a difficult thing to explain and put into words, but it's a very real thing. And um, so I encourage you as a student to be as experimental uh, when you get here and take classes in different programs and then build your, um, university um, study out of that. So more and more of our students, for example, are doing uh, double majors. So you can do a social justice major with a political science major. That's a very you know, natural complement. You could do um, social justice with CSI, with gynecology, um, with all, all kinds of different programs. So in the social justice program, you will combine these three uh, core elements. Uh, you have the classroom learning, so that's just like any other program, you go to your classes, and then you'll have opportunities to combine that with local community experiential learning. So what that means is you will be partnered uh, with an organization uh, in London, which is doing um, work related to social justice. So that might be poverty work, that might be at women's shelters, that might be in local politics. And you will get to spend some time working with the organization to get a, a real like first hand feel of local work. 
And then if you want, you don't have to, but if you want, we also have opportunities for global learning. So um, for trips to different countries. So this last year, we went to the Dominican Republic. Um, Claire Gain will tell you a little bit about that in a few minutes. Um, we have also had uh, trips to Italy, to Rondonet has, has been a, a trip for several years that obviously has been put on hold due to the COVID situation, um, but that will hopefully open up again soon um, next year. We've had trips to Tanzania, to Guatemala, uh, to different places around the world. And those are really have been super important formative experiences and even life-changing experiences for a number of our students. So the way it works in SJP is pretty straightforward. Everyone who signs up does a couple of the core introductory classes. So that's 1025 and 1026. Those are the classes that give you a foundation for the whole program. Um, I usually teach 1025. And then throughout your second and third year, you have, a, you have the choice to, to take the kind of classes that resonate with you. So there's a lot of space in the second and third year. And then in fourth year, all the students come back and take their capstone course together. So that's the final course that we all do. Um, and that's an opportunity for students to spend a whole term working on a research project that, that impassions them. So maybe I'll just back up and I'll just say a little bit more about some of the courses that I teach. And um, so I mentioned I do the first year introduction to social justice. I also do a second year class called um, social activism and theories of political change. I do a third year class called living a just life in an unjust world and another third year class called um, justice and economic alternatives. I also do the fourth year capstone class. So students, as I said in SJP, combine their academic learning with experiential learning opportunities. So one of them is the local community-based uh, opportunity. So as I said, you can be partnered with a local organization in London. And then another is uh, the global learning opportunities. So these have been to the Dominican Republic, to Guatemala, to Tanzania, to places all over the world. Um, we just got back from one before uh, the, the COVID pandemic hit. And so obviously with the COVID situation, the, there's a question mark about, about this right now, but we are certainly hopeful that this will, um, that we will continue doing these as soon as it's absolutely safe to do so. So for example, I was just about to take a group of students to Detroit in the end of June to go to this wonderful conference called the um, Allied Media Conference, which is a gathering of activists and scholars from all across North America, which happens every year for the last 20 years, and it's phenomenal. Last year, the founder of the um, Me Too movement, Tanya Burke, was there. Um, so those are the kind of trips that we do. Obviously, this year has been, has been canceled. So with your SJP degree, one of the questions that we always get is, um, you know, what does this mean for my future? What can I, what can I do of it? And really the answer is, is anything. Our students go on to work in law, they go on to work in health, they go on to work um, in social work. Let me, let me give you a couple more concrete examples. So um, later today, if you like, you can go on to our webpage and we have this really nice page called Life After Social Justice. And um, let me, let me share this with you. Yeah. Okay. So these are a number of our grads. And this page, I think, is just so interesting to give you just a flavor of what some of um, our, our students have done. So uh, this is Steve. Um, Steve is a financial advisor. Uh, this is Skylar. Uh, uh, Skylar works for an environmental uh, um, nonprofit organization. Um, this is Patricia. She's getting her PhD. This is Elsie, Elsie is a lawyer. This is Dan, Dan's a social worker. So you can feel free to, to peruse this at your leisure whenever you like, but really the answer is that our students um, go on to get careers in all kinds of fields. They put their 
they're learning um, to use in, in healthcare fields, in legal fields, in the nonprofit sector, um, all kinds of, of areas like that. Um, so let me, let me introduce you now to a couple more members of our program. Um, and then we'll take any questions that people that people have. So first, I'll um, I'll introduce you to another faculty member, uh, Claire Gain, and Claire will talk to you a little bit about um, our experiential learning program, so you get more of a flavor of what that's like. And then I'm going to introduce you to um, a couple of our students. We have Emma and Chelsea here. So first, can I pass it over to Claire? Great. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Okay. Wonderful. Um, so thank you, Tom, first off for hosting this. this. These are certainly strange times and I echo Tom's sentiments and wishing that we could be together in person to chat a little bit further. Um, but thank you so much for joining us regardless. So I guess, uh, first off, I will just note that I'm actually, um, I am a part-time faculty member with Social Justice and Peace Studies, but I'm also a graduate of the program as well. I graduated the program several years ago um, and it's really what, kind of uh, catalyst the rest of my life in terms of my academic career and also my activism. So I'm currently completing my PhD um, at Western while teaching part-time. Um, and in terms of my activism, I'm really involved with mining justice and I work very closely with a community in the Dominican Republic that is directly impacted by Canadian mining. So that's what I wanna to speak to you about a little bit further. Uh, so I'm going to share my screen with you here. So I wanted to just chat with you a little bit about the Dominican Republic um, Solidarity Delegation, which is a course called um, SJPS 3210G, it's Globalization and Citizenship. So this course is really unique in terms of experiential learning because you do have the classroom component, but there also is a seven day um, in-country immersion trip where you get to kind of take theory to praxis, um, recognizing as Tom said that social justice and peace studies is so much more about just academia and the theory that you learn in class and activism is a huge component of it. So it's really important to us to be able to, you know, learn all these theories and, and figure out why these issues exist in the world um, in an academic realm but then also be able to take those theories to the ground level and work with people um, and kind of have a sharing of knowledge with people who are directly impacted by these big ideas that we're learning about in the classroom. So um, within this trip, as I said, it's a seven day trip to the Dominican Republic. You have your in-class component first um, and then on upon return as well. But when we're in country and throughout the course uh, content, we talk about issues of ecological justice and sustainability, community mobilization, extraction of multinational corporations, uh, migration, mig migration and citizenship, enforced labor and exploitation. And something that's really exciting about this trip is that, and this course in general, is that it's also, um, in terms of academia, there's a research project um, accompanying it. So students can pick a topic out of the things that we're going to experience in country that they're really interested in and do some secondary research to figure out, you know, what exists, what is going on um, in the literature. But then when they're in country, they can do primary participant observation and really get to uh, know the topic a little bit more from the people that they're working directly with in country. So I wanted to just share a few pictures of um, the Dominican Republic delegation. Uh, so this here is a place called Rio Blanco in the Dominican Republic. And this is an area that we stayed in for a, a large portion of our journey. And Rio Blanco actually successfully resisted a Canadian mining company that was trying to um, start an extraction project on their land in the 70s. And since then, they have created a self-sustainable community in the mountains that has a coffee cooperative, a bamboo farm. Um, and they're doing a lot of really amazing work in terms of community development. And this is really important because a lot a lot of um, the dominant narrative surrounding kind of globalization and multinational corporations is that these communities really need uh, their presence in order for them to kind of develop. So Rio Blanco was a perfect example of communities coming together and using their own knowledge that they have about their traditional lands to create something that is really, really sustainable for themselves and their communities. So this is a picture of some of the students in previous years um, working on the coffee farm that they have in the Dominican Republic. 
Another big portion of the trip is looking at extraction and multinational corporations. So to do this, we uh, visit a mining site that is owned by a Canadian company and we talk with community members about the impact that this mine has had on their lives and their livelihoods. Um, so not only do students get to kind of read about what people traditionally think about mining um, in a Canadian context, but then they get to go and they get to talk to communities who di live directly beside a mining site and hear about the impacts that this mine has had on their lives. Another portion of our trip is surrounding uh, ecological sustainability. So this year our students got to participate in a mangrove and coral reef restoration project. So here they are at one of the beaches um, called Boca Chica, which is not too far from the capital city, uh, working on one of the, the restoration projects, kind of getting their hands right uh, in, in the water, in the sand, and um, working with local communities to help them rebuild their environments. And another portion that I didn't have a photo of here, um, but that is really crucial to the trip, is looking at migration and forced labor. So in the Dominican Republic, there are um, a lot of Haitians that are trafficked over to the Dominican to work on sugarcane bate. So students actually get the chance to visit a sugarcane bate, which is where the individuals who work uh, on, in horrible conditions in sugarcane, in sugarcane plantations live. So we got to walk around the bate and talk to community members who are living in um, extreme poverty Poverty due to this kind of exploitation and really see where our sugar comes from. So something that students have shared from the trip is that it really helps them understand the impact that they as Canadian citizens have globally on local communities. Um, so, you know, if you wear a gold ring or own stocks in gold companies, you get to actually talk to people who are impacted by that reality. Uh, you know, if you eat sugar, which all of us do, it's in so many of our foods, you really get to see where that sugar come from and who is making that sugar and producing it for you. So it's a really incredible trip uh, in the sense of taking that theory to praxis uh, and also gaining just a, a broader understanding of what social justice academia and activism can look like. Um, as you can tell, I'm really passionate about this trip and this topic. Uh, as Tom mentioned, we're not sure what it will look like this year, but as soon as things are safe, um, we'll certainly get things up and running again because experiential learning is a huge portion of the Social Justice and Peace Studies program. And it is the reason that I chose uh, many years ago to partake in this program. I hope that many of you will as well. So uh, I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have about this later on. Um, and also happy to share my contact information if people had more direct questions and wanted to chat further. Thank you for your time. Thanks so much, Claire. Thank you, Tom. Um, okay, can I, uh, we'll pass it on to the students now. So I'd like to introduce you all to Emma Cunningham. So if, Emma, if you'd like to just tell us a little bit about yourself and about your experience in the program, that would be really nice. Yeah, for sure. Hi, everybody. My name is Emma. Um, I am a, I just finished my, my first year in the program, but also my third year. I'm a transfer student. So um, I was in theater production before. So it's a bit of a shift. Um, but my interest really lies in um, trauma and healing and mental health and advocacy. And I think that um, this program has been really beautiful for furthering my understanding and my perspective on um, what it means to engage with people in a healing way. And I think the most impactful thing that I've lear been learning and um, continue to learn and grow in is understanding just how important um, societal like systems and um, different oppressions and, and life circumstances and how all of these things are what builds someone's well-being and how um, in order to tackle issue, issues of um, health and well-being and mental health especially, you have to take a look at why these, um, why these struggles are happening and taking it from a grassroots perspective. And I think for me, that's been a huge takeaway from this program so far. Um, I have really loved um, just how intersectional this program is. And I think, um, and by intersectional, I mean, it takes into account so many different perspectives. And um, with each issue that we tackle, we 
uh, are looking at it from an economic perspective and we're looking at it from a cultural perspective, from a sexuality perspective, from a gendered perspective, from like an indigenous perspective. And um, I think also Tom was mentioning earlier about how when you ask like, what can you do with an, an SJP degree? I think that's why you can really do just about anything with it. And, and that's in that, um, because we look at each issue from such so many different perspectives and we look at it, we look at each issue from, um, from a grassroots perspective, from the bottom up, you can take those concepts and bring them into any area of your life. So my, what I'm hoping to do personally is I'm hoping to go into um, social work after this. Um, and I, yeah, I think it's been a really beautiful learning environment and it's really nice to be able to be in the presence with a lot of like-minded people and have really in-depth discussions about issues that affect all of us in such different ways. Um, and yeah, I think the, another really big takeaway that I've really, really truly enjoyed is just how current all the learning is. And so even like throughout the fall when we were having our big election, um, that was, we were talking about that on a weekly basis. We'd have check-ins and we talk about, okay, so this is what's going on in politics right now and how can we reflect on that from a critical lens? And I think that's like a huge, that's a huge strength of the program um, because we're able to look at issues that are happening right now and we're able to talk through it with people who are, um, with professors who are also engaged with what's going on right now as well and students who are just as passionate as well. So that's a little bit about me and what I love about the program. Um, yeah. Thanks, Emma. That's really yeah. great. Cheers. Um, Chelsea. Hi. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So just to introduce myself a little first, my name's Chelsea, as Tom just said, but um, I did an honor specialization in social justice and peace studies, and this is my graduating year. Um, throughout my degree, I was really involved with like a bunch of different activism, whether that be for Habitat for Humanity, uh, Amnesty International. I also, through um, the program, had a placement at an Indigenous agency this year, which was absolutely amazing. It was, I never realized to the extent um, that the London community was impacted by, um, the London communities, like Indigenous community was also impacted by things that affect um, Indigenous people across Canada. Like, for example, I did a project on how, um, Oneida Nation, which is right outside London, actually still doesn't have clean water. And I got to kind of come up with like a policy recommendation for how to try to help change that. Um, and yeah, I absolutely love this program. I also, like Emma, am a, a student who switched into this program from something completely just different. I was in business and music before, um, but I actually, I am so happy that I switched into this program because it's just, I never felt like I could learn like so much in since like switching into this program like I feel like before um, a lot of university programs are more about kind of memorizing things regurgitating information that's not at all what the SJP program is about it's about researching like following your own passions your own interests and truly it is a learning process which you don't really get in so many other programs um, and yeah I kind of just I loved my experience. I got to learn about um, understanding just like social systems and how they're all interrelated and different social justice issues, how they're all interrelated as well. Um, a lot of onto the ground experience as well. Like I actually attended the DR trip that Claire was just talking about, <laughs> um, which I absolutely adored. I met so many amazing people on that trip. So many activists that just their stories are going to continue to inspire me for the rest of my life. Um, and also just like when you go on those trips, you really do have like a little family that comes out of it, which was amazing too. Um, and yeah, I just think the social justice and peace program is such a unique experience and I'm excited for you guys if you get to attend. So. <laughs> Thanks, Chelsea. Yeah, so what Chelsea just said, I want to pick up on. Um, one of the things that I really think is, is unique and so lovely about SJP is the community. 
right? We have a, such a, we have a very tight, a very kind, a very warm community. It's, it's informal. Um, you can kind of like get a, a sense of that. Um, and you know, the, the students and the profs get to know each other pretty well. And you know, my, my door is always open in non-pandemic times and my virtual door will always be open in these times. And like, I think Kings in general is really awesome for that. We have small class sizes, there's a lot of interaction. And SJP in particular, I think really, we strive to be um, a community, a place where it's not just here to learn, but is here to build relationships with people that will, will last beyond um, the school year um, and, that are, and that are so enriching for, for, for student life. Um, that's all I had to say. We can open for questions. Perfect. Thank you, everyone, for um, the inform uh, informative session. Um, I actually have a, uh, quite a few questions lined up and ready uh, to go, but I'm, I will ask attendees if they have any more questions, please feel free to submit them to the chat function right now. Um, I actually have a, uh, a question for uh, uh, faculty members. Do you recommend social justice and peace for students interested in teaching? Yes, absolutely. Um, so lots of our students go into teaching for sure. And we have uh, an arrangement actually with Western Faculty of Education um, that our, that if a student successfully complete an SJP degree, they have privileged access to the Western um, education um, program if you want to go on and become a teacher. So absolutely, lots of our students do that. Um, having an SJP background is is you know, I think is fundamental, right, for, um, for, for, for teaching the next generation about the most kind of important issues um, that students are gonna be thinking about. So 100%, yes. Perfect, thank you. And I also have a, a question for um, uh, uh, Emma and Chelsea. Um, how, what kind of extracurricular activities are you involved in on campus and how do you balance your academic uh, responsibilities with your extracurricular activities? Um, do you want to start, Emma? <laughs> okay, go for it. Okay. Um, so like I was saying, I do a lot of like my own activism too on the side. So um, I was the vice president of Habitat for Humanity for the last two years. Um, so that was on main campus and I absolutely love that. I got to plan a bunch of like the um, fundraising to help um, support local like housing efforts to, because that's basically what Habitat for Humanity does. It's like affordable housing. Um, and I also got to volunteer to contribute to like building the houses in London too, which was awesome a bunch of times. Um, I did Amnesty International too. I was the president for that of that for a while at Western. Um, and I got to, through your social justice degree, you get a placement in your last year um, at like a local nonprofit that you kind of get to choose as well. And I was placed with an indigenous organization. I'd always want to do more work with indigenous communities after like taking this program. Um, and yeah, I absolutely love that. I got to, basically what they do is it's family conflict resolution. That's the department I was working in. Um, so yeah, a bunch of different activism work. And I'd say it's, it's fairly doable to kind of combine it because the program kind of like expects you to also be involved in activism on the side. So it's built in a way that it, it does work, you know, like for example, um, we do have that course that sets us up to have the placement doing the volunteer work as well. So. And I think if I can just, I, you illustrated really well a lot of the different opportunities that can come from it from inv being involved in SJP and I think for me what I found really helpful for balancing is that whatever issues I'm really passionate about outside of the program I have always been able to find a way to work with my professors to um, write my papers on that issue as well or find a way to spin that issue um, to make it relevant to whatever class it is and I think that collaborative learning has been really useful for being able to balance my own activism and my own extracurriculars with my academics because they can coincide so well. Um, yeah. Perfect. Thank you so much. And I also have a, another question from a student asking um, faculty members, what are the mandatory courses for social justice and peace in first year? So in first year, you take two, uh, 1025 and 1026. Um, so those are both, they're basically the, an introduction. They're these 
survey classes that introduce you to a broad range of social justice topics. Um, so most students do take them in the first year. Um, some students take the 10 times 6 in the second year. You're, you're fine to, to do that. You just need those two classes as prerequisites for the other classes. So you don't want to take too long taking them. Um, so I teach the 1025 and it's such a fun class because it's, it's basically like doing a bit of exploring of all the major issues under the sun. Um, so we talk a little bit about inequality. We talk a little bit about gender. We talk a bit about race. We talk about war and conflict. We talk about global trade. It's like the, um, a little taste of really the biggest issues. And for as I said before, like that's my favorite class to teach, and I think lots of the lots of students who end up in social justice and peace are there because they took a first year class. So often students take it as an elective. It sounds interesting; they're not planning a new SJP, but the content really resonates with them, and the way that we approach these issues, which is you know a very interdisciplinary approach. I think Emma said this earlier, really bringing together economics and politics and philosophy is such um, a uh, useful approach. And with the, the normative aspiration to make the world a better place, I think that really resonates with students too. So those are the, those are the first the classes you take in the first year. Perfect, thank you. And we also- Claire, You need to jump in when I, if you wanna add anything at any point, okay? <laughs> Perfect. I just uh, I also have another question about the experiential learning. So students are wondering, are, what's the duration of the, these global trips? Um, are they a week, a semester, and how do they? Uh, yeah, how long they are? Claire, do you want to? Sure. Um, so it kind of varies depending on which course you're in. Uh, the Dominican Republic Solidarity Delegation, which is Globalization and Citizenship, uh, it's a seven, usually seven to nine, kind of depending on um, the dates and such, seven to nine day in-country trip, but then you also have the class component. Um, there are other uh, experiential learning trips which are a little bit longer, some two weeks. Uh, I know the Ronde Ney program is up to a month. Um, so it really just depends on what's offered that year uh, and also what your interests are. Tom, feel free. To yeah, know. totally. So the, the Dominican one is the, is the one week during reading week, so it's during term time. And the, the trip to Italy at the moment is a month long in the summertime. Yeah. Um, and then there are some others like, so as I mentioned, the one that we had planned to Detroit was going to be for three nights. So there's a range. Yeah. Oh, the other thing I, I, we should have mentioned is that these trips cost money. Um, however, we really have fantastic um, financial support for our students. So all King students are have access to some um, money for trips, but social justice, we have our own additional pot of money. And so you apply for it, but um, most students do get it. And I think Claire would know that this better than me, but I believe most of the students, if not all the students who went on the Dominican Republic trip did, did get money from the program. And so it makes the trips very affordable. Claire, are you able to add to that? Yeah, so I know on this past trip, all of the students had their trip almost entirely covered. Um, it depends on the year and the cost of your trip, of course, but uh, King's does have incredible funding. Uh, when I was in social justice and peace many years ago, I had the opportunity to partake in a lot of these courses. And I thought, wow, what an amazing program where I get to travel, I get a credit for it, and the school's gonna pay for a lot of it, uh, which is really, really fantastic. So it's a huge, huge um, component of the program and something that's very unique to social justice and peace studies. Yeah, so if those experiential learning things are exciting you, but you're worried about the cost, like, don't worry, we will, if, if you're passionate about it, we will figure out a way to make it affordable for you, for sure. Perfect, thank you. And I also have a, a question from a student, um, and she's, uh, she says that she took Social Justice and Peace 1025 with you through an outreach program uh, when, um, when she was in high school. She loved the course, but she wants you to explain how that course differs from Social Justice and Peace 1026. Sure. So uh, the 1025 um, is, is about, we do a survey course of the kind of major issues and the major kind of institutions that exist in the world. And the main difference is 1026 is mainly about the main theories. 
So it's a bit more abstract. It's a bit more about theories of justice. So what is liberalism? What is feminism? What is socialism? Whereas 1025 is more about the institutions. So what are the actual systems in place, right? What does capitalism look like? Um, how do trade agreements function? Um, those kinds of things. So they're, they're complementary, right? They go, they go hand in hand, but 1025 is a bit more kind of uh, big picture and a bit more institutional and 1026 is a bit more um, theoretical. So we want our students to have a grounding in both because both of those will be necessary for, the, for future classes. Perfect, thank you. So I have my last question here and this is a student who's inter interested in social justice and peace but also interested in history. Would right. you uh, recommend a, a double major? Yes, so double major, um, you know, different professors will say different things, but I think more and more of us are recommending students to do a double major. Um, um, you know, so 10 years ago or so, it was more common people were doing honors degrees, which meant they were just like focusing in one area, and that's fine if that's, if that's what you wanna do. Um, but more and more today are doing double major because it just gives you more breadth. And that is so wonderful, right? Like we, we, we live in an economic system at the moment where none of the single degrees lead direct to jobs, right? A history degree doesn't lead directly to one job, a social justice degree, a sociology degree, all these degrees le lead to many potential jobs. Um, and so because that's true, what you want to really be doing in your undergraduate degree is making sure you have breadth and making sure you are studying classes that you are deeply passionate about. Because when you're passionate about classes, your grades are gonna be better, you're gonna get more out of it, you're gonna have better relationships with your professors, so that then you can go on to the next step and have good reference letters and good grades. So doing those things is like the most important for, for career. And you, don't, you won't know what you're passionate about until you try. So, so take the intro to history class, take the intro to SJP, and Take, take some others and then see what is really inspiring you. And that's how you should build your program. But absolutely, yes, we have, a, we have lots of students who do SJP in history. That's a very, I think, sensible, it's a very natural um, combination. Those work really well together. Perfect, thank you so much. Uh, at this point, I don't have any more questions, but I will, I'm gonna send it back to you for a final piece of advice for our future students. So if there's one thing you would like to say to them, what would it be? So one thing I'd like to say, it would be to um, allow yourself to experiment with different first year classes. You know, lots of times students come in from high school and they have a sense of what they want to do. And that's great. But most people by the time they're in fourth year undergrad will not be doing what they started with. And you will get so much more out of your classes. You will become a better person person, you'll become a richer, more interesting person if you allow yourself to follow your passions. And that will also pay off huge dividends in future jobs, right? Because you're going to be such a better candidate for any and every job if you are a passionate person who's successful in their study. If you're someone who just has always felt like I have to study whatever, and you're like, don't really want to be there, and you're forcing yourself to be there, your grades are going to suffer, and it's not going to be a good situation. So my advice to you is really is to is to let yourself explore. Definitely the first year, but even second year too. Feel free to explore the different classes and come and talk to the prof, sit in in our classes, and get in touch with us, get in touch with myself or with Claire, and feel free to ask us questions and, and go from there. And so I'm gonna write my contact information again in the chat so people have it. Really feel free to write me anything you want. Um, I'm always here, always happy to chat, and I really do hope to see some of you next year. Perfect. Um, Professor uh, Claire and Chelsea and Emma, do you have any pieces of advice for our future students? I think um, if I could piggyback off of what Tom was saying about um, in, sometimes it takes a while and that's okay. Um, I personally, I've this is my third university in four years. So um, I've tried out three different programs and I think um, so that that really resonates with me that sometimes it it, it's really it's really important to make sure that you're in a space that you really you go to class and you feel invested in the material and you feel connected to it 
And I think that's what really drew me to social justice and peace studies. And what is keeping me here is that every time, especially in the first semester, every time I'd go to class, I'd leave class and have a whole new perspective on the world. And I, I would leave each class and just have to like sit down and digest for a while because it was so, it resonated so much with my own personal experience and with the ways that I um, was thinking. And, and I think that's what's so beautiful about the program as well is that because it, we tackle so many different issues and we tackle issues that are happening right now to us in our lives that we can see, it gives a really um, beautiful, it's a really beautiful tool to understand the world and to move forward in a moral and ethical way. So that's, that's my advice is it, it might, it might take time, but this program is great. So. <laughs> um, yeah, just also kind of to piggyback off of all of that, um, definitely just like don't settle for something you're not interested in. Like there's so many things that like in different classes that are going to be so interesting throughout your program. You don't, and sorry, throughout your degree, you don't quite know what that is yet, but just like don't put all your eggs in one basket, have come in with an open mind. Um, I think I came in kind of to university with a bit of a closed mind because I was like, okay, this is the exact program I'm gonna do. Um, but then when I started exploring more with my electives, that's how I found social justice. And that's how I truly found my passion. And it completely changed the course of my life, of my career, of like my interests. Um, and also just take all the opportunities that are presented to you in your degree. Like you're gonna come across so many like volunteer things, just like so many social things. And you just take everything that comes to you because it's at the end of the day, your undergrad's only four years. And I guess I'm like reminiscing a little now, but like, <laughs> I wish it was longer. So yeah. <laughs> Finally, I'll just um, say that the social justice and peace program is unlike any in Canada. Um, it drastically changed my life as a student and now as a faculty member being able to see the way that it helps students to kind of grow and develop into these really amazing people that are doing such important work in the world is just really really wonderful um, and aside from social justice and peace studies king's is the most amazing place to study as tom mentioned it's such a small community you walk through campus and you know people so if you're someone who really values those interpersonal relationships with your peers and with professors um, king's is definitely the place for you and we would absolutely love to have you. So I put my email in the chat as well as Tom did. Um, and I'm, I'm super happy to chat any further or for any further questions you might have. Perfect. Thank you, Tom. Thank, thank you, Claire and Chelsea and Emma for uh, this great time. And thank you for the, taking the time to talk to us today. And I would also like to thank everyone who's attending this session. Uh, we are hope, uh, we're hoping that we will be able to see you soon on campus. But uh, until then, take care of yourselves. And if you have any more questions, feel free to email kings at uwo.ca and I'll make sure to um, send your questions along to anybody on this call today. But until then, take care. Take care, everyone. To see you later.